Today we're going to talk about compound interest and I'm going to explain compound interest in an easy and visual way for beginners. And by the end of this video you should have an idea about how compound interest works and applies to your investment as well as how it indirectly affects your wealth through fund management feeds. This is something you should absolutely be aware of. I will also share an easy rule of thumb on how to calculate the doubling time of an investment at a specific interest rate. Also make sure to stay tuned if you want to know how many days it takes to reach $1 million if you start out with $1 and double your money each day. Let's begin. Compound interest or interest on interest is this almost magical thing that you need to use to get your investments to grow. Whether you keep your money in a savings account, invest in stocks or in any other way where you get interest returns on your investment. This is one of the most basic concepts that you need to understand when you invest to be able to make smart decisions for your personal finances and take control over your future, and that I wish that I would have learned earlier, as the time invested is the most important factor for the end result. There's a good reason why Einstein himself would have called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world and one of the most powerful forces in the universe. And who am I to go against one of the world's most intelligent persons? Compound interest lets your investments and savings grow by themselves while you sleep or eat or watch YouTube videos. Yep, I know what you're doing. With compound interest, your money will work for you and grow exponentially, like the snowball effect. To understand compound interest, first you have to understand simple interest. Meet Kevin and Cindy, who are both 30 years old and want to invest during 30 years for their pensions. Kevin has got $1,000 to invest, and on this money he will get 10% interest rate equivalent to $100. Every year, Kevin withdraws the interest from the account, but leaves the initial investment, the principal of $1,000. After one year, Kevin gets $100 of interest and has now got $1,100 in total. After the second year, he gets $100 of interest again and has now got $1,200 in total. And you guessed it, after three years, the same thing happens again. He gets $100 of interest and he has now got $1,300. Yeah, I think you got it. After 30 years, Kevin has got $3,000 of interest, $100 each year during 30 years. And as he withdraws the interest every year, he doesn't get any interest on interest or compound interest. So in total, he has got $4,000 after 30 years. Now let's see what happens to Cindy. She also invests $1,000 just as Kevin did. And just as he did, she also gets 10% interest rate on her investment each year. But instead of withdrawing the interest every year, like Kevin did, she leaves the money invested and gets compound interest. After one year, she gets $1,000 of interest just like Kevin. When another year has passed, it's time for the money to grow again. And here comes the interesting part, because after the second year, she doesn't get $100, but $110. This is 10% of the money she accumulated after the first year, $1,100. Thus, after two years, she now has $1,210. After the third year has passed, she gets interest again, and again this year she gets more interest than the last year. After the third year, she gets 10% of 1,210, which is 121. And now she has got $1,301 in total. And so on. As time passes, the earned interest increases each year. As on the second year, Cindy does not only get interest on her initial investment of $1,000, but also on the interest earned previous years. The interest is compounding. In this figure, I visualize the growth of Kevin and Cindy's investments. The red line shows Kevin's growth without compound interest. With compound interest, Cindy's investment grows exponentially, as the purple line shows. The more interest her investment generates, the faster it grows. And here, time is your best friend. You can see this clearly by looking at how fast $1,000 is earned. After about 9 years, the first $1,000 has doubled to over 2000 then it goes faster and it takes only 4 additional years for the investment to grow to 3000. After that, 4000 is reached in less than 3 years, and it grows faster and faster the more wealth has accumulated. Kevin does not get the same snowball effect as his money grows linearly, and it takes the same amount of time to grow his investment from 1000 to 2000 as it does from 2000 to 3000, and so on. A rule of thumb that you can use to quickly calculate the doubling time of an investment at a specific interest rate is the rule of 72, or the 72 rule. The rule of 72 says that you can obtain the doubling time of an investment by dividing 72 with the interest rate in percentage. If you expect an interest rate of 1%, which is equivalent to the interest rate of many savings accounts these days, then it will take you 72 divided by 1, which is equal to 72 years to double your money. 72 years. And this is without taking any taxation into account. 
In reality, at this rate you will end up losing money due to the inflation, as this is higher than 1% and your money will lose buying power. With a rate of 2%, which is equal to the inflation nowadays, it will take 36 years for the investment to double. And with 10% interest rate equal to the stock market yearly returns, it takes 7.2 years. So to not lose money to the inflation, you have to invest them with a higher interest rate. To really understand how powerful compound interest is, imagine that you start with $1 and then you double the money each day. On the second day you will have $2, on the third day you will then have $4, on the fourth $8 and so on. Do you know how long time it will take to get to $1 million? 21 days. Now it's far from realistic to think that you can double your money every day if you don't go to a casino and have an immense amount of luck. But this shows how powerful compound interest really is. The amount of money that you can accumulate depends on the interest rate, the principal and the time invested. The money will naturally grow faster with a higher interest rate. But remember that the higher interest rate usually also means a higher risk for your investments. The principal or initial investment is also important, but not as important as time. Let's take a look. If you don't have as much investment time as Cindy did, but you want to reach the same amount in the end, then you have to start with a higher principal. If you invest during 20 years instead of 30, then you need an initial investment of $2,600, 2.6 times more to reach the same result. And if your investment horizon is only 10 years, you need a principal as high as $6,700 or 6.7 times more to get the same end result. So if you're young, then time is on your side and it can be worth investing even smaller amounts. If you're a bit older when you start investing, then if possible, it would be worth trying to invest higher amounts. But even small amounts will of course be able to grow with compound interest and make a difference in the end. I'm often asked if compound interest only works for savings accounts. But it works with any investment where you get a return, for example stocks or bonds. If you want to know how to invest with compound interest, then check out my recent video for different suggestions. The whole concept with compound interest includes saving and investing instead of immediate rewards. It's interesting to consider how much immediate consumption would be worth in the future if you had invested the money instead. A coffee on the go for about say $5 would be equal to $80 in 30 years invested with 10% interest rate and compound interest. Or a lunch for around $10 would in the same way be worth almost $160 with compound interest. Now I'm not saying that you should never buy coffee or lunch, but it's good to be aware so you can make smart economic decisions and have control over your consumption and investing. Often we just don't get one coffee, but maybe we get one coffee a week. In one year this would be $260. And maybe this is not so much for you in one year, but after 30 years invested with company interest, this could be $4,100 instead. And that lunch could in the same way be $8,200. Is it still worth it? Honestly, this was more than I expected. Another example of when compound interest has an effect is when looking at management fees of funds. It's easy to be fooled to think that a management fee of 0.2% or 2% does not matter that much. The difference is just a small percentage, but with compound interest, this difference will grow larger the more time passes. For one, the management fee accumulates into a larger sum as time passes, and for the second, the fee also decreases your invested sum that can compound new interest the coming year. Let's take a look at the example of Cindy again. The first time I didn't take any fees into consideration. But here you can see how much she would get if she had invested with a specific management fee percentage. The fee of a mutual fund is commonly around 1-2%, to and for index funds the fees are lower and usually below 0.4%. Hedge funds can have even higher fees of 2.5% or more, different performance-based fees where the fund gets to take a greater fee if it beats its benchmark index also exists. If you're not familiar with different fund types, make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos where I will cover this in more detail. If Cindy had invested in an index fund with a yearly fee of 0.2%, she would have had 94% of the sum she would get without fees after 30 years. If she instead had invested with a fee of 2%, she would only have had 56% in the end. So as you can see, the fee is crucial for the end result. When the bank says that the fee is 2% per year, maybe you think it's a bit expensive, but we still get to keep 98%, so it cannot be that bad, right? If the bank instead would have told us that with this fee, you would get to keep just over half of the money in 30 years, 
we probably would have considered twice if we really should accept the deal or not. Should we then always invest with as low fee as possible? No, not necessarily. If an actively managed fund can beat its benchmark index, the higher fee can be justifiable. But you should be aware that many actively managed funds are in reality disguised passive funds. This means that they pretend to be actively managed so that they can collect a higher fee, but their holding is so close to the passive index funds that there is no real possibility for them to differ from the index and beat it. And then the higher fee instead makes them perform even worse than the index. There's much more to say about this, but it has to be another video later. If you've gotten value from this video, please like and subscribe for more content involving personal finance.